Hi, this is Petey at Bergsburg Arcade at BergsburgArcade.com and this is tutorial number 105, I believe. Uh, this is just basically a continuation of the last tutorial since we ran out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Unity. And I've replaced my mob with the uh, Dungeon Guardian. I haven't even paused it yet, or unpaused, stopped it. <laughs> okay, so we know we got it chasing us forward. Uh, let's go back into our script and we'll want to have them rotate now. So that's under mob AI. And since I've already assigned these values up here, I'm just going to use them again. So I'll just copy them. I'll come down after the else block and just paste them in. Now, because I've already said what type they are, we don't have to say again. And the first line is the exact same, and the second line is almost the exact same, but instead of using transform.forward, we'll want transform.right. And it works quite similar to the one up top, except in, instead of telling us uh, if he's in front of us or behind us, it's going to tell us if he's to the right side of us or to the left side of us, one being dead center to the right and negative one being dead center to the left. And if you get a zero, that means he's either in front of you or behind you. But up here we can tell if he's in front or behind. So let's use this here to start rotating us. So we're going to say if direction is greater than, uh, let's just start off with zero. We will have to uh, apply some sort of dampening to it. And let's add the else statement. It'll actually be an else if because there's actually three conditions we want here. We can rotate left, rotate right, or don't rotate at all. And I'll just cut and paste this one in and stick an else in front of it. But instead of checking to see if it's greater than zero, we want to see if it's a negative number so it's less than zero. And I'll close that off and then finally our else. Now these are just rotations. So if it's greater than zero, that means it's to the right and we want to rotate right. So I'm just going to go up to my player input. I go down to the rotate one and grab the one that says right. Now I'll just come in and paste it in. Uh, the next one's actually rotating left. So we'll just say dot left. And the third option, he doesn't rotate at all. So we say dot none. So let's go ahead and go into Unity, see if there's any errors. If not, we'll start it up and try it out. Unfortunately, my USB drives are kicking in right now, which is causing a bit of lag while it tries to recompile the script. All right, looks like we're ready, so we'll start it up. And there he goes. He's looking at me, but you notice he's kind of jittery. Uh, we have to apply some dampening. And if you also notice, there's a couple other mobs running at me. I've already done uh, this guy here, the giant. But let's go ahead and fix that jitteriness. What, what is happening is it's because we have it set to such a, a small variance. You know, it's either greater than zero or less than zero. It really flicks between them really quick. So he's constantly trying to adjust left and right. So let's add a little bit of... Um, cushion there for us where we don't have to rotate at all. And you can play around with these values, uh, find one you like. I'm just going to say 0.3. So it's a 30% variance on each side. And that seemed to be pretty smooth for me. And it looks like I did have an error. I don't have a fall animation attached to them. But that's okay. I can actually create one. and. I guess I'll do the next tutorial on how to set your mob up if you don't have all the animations. So let's start it up. And he's still a little jittery. He should not be. Okay, I'm just going to save it and I'm going to go take another look at it. And there's the problem. This one was supposed to be a negative. Okay, so let's go back in and let it recompile. Everything should be fine. So it starts up, and there he goes. So I'll start turning a bit. 
uh, <laughs> if you're watching the scene view here, you notice the giant has a bit of a hitch in his run. I'm not sure if uh, the animation has an extra frame it's not supposed to or it's missing a frame. I'll have to go in and check. So I think it's a very good mob that fits this, the graphical style of the game, so I do want to use it. But anyway, we got everything moving the way we want. Now there's a few other things we're going to want to have in there, uh, such as range. Uh, he shouldn't just keep trying to run towards us if uh, if he's you know, like within attack range. But there was one thing I wanted to do is I want to change these to a constant. And I'm just going to throw these up here. So private. Uh, we'll say the type. We'll make it a constant first. And the type is a float. And I'm just going to call it uh, rotation damp. And I'll make it equal to 0 0.03. This way here, I only have to come up here and adjust the value. I don't have to come down and find it in the code. And I'll paste it in here. And here I want the negative of it. So I leave the negative in front. And I'm also going to do one for the forward dampening. Well, yeah, the forward dampening. So private const float forward damp. Now we've gone over constants before, so you should be familiar with them. And paste that in, just to get rid of some of these magic numbers down here. Uh, there we go. Since we're only at about seven minutes, let's go ahead and actually add the uh, the range where he stops chasing us. And add the F there, because I forgot it. So let's um, let's make a public to start off with, and I'm going to put it above the target. So public will make it a float, and I'll just call it uh, base melee range. And I'm just going to start that off at equaling two. And then down here where we're checking to see if we want to move forward or not. Uh, we're just going to want to check to see what the distance is between us. So I'm going to leave a line there. I'm going to create a float and I'm just going to call it dist for distance. And this is going to be equal to vector three dot distance. And what we want is uh, our target's distance and our distance. So we can get those by saying target or sorry, not, not their distance or their position. So target dot position comma and then our position which is my transform dot position and then we'll just simply check to see if uh, they're within range so if dist oh, wrong bracket if dist is greater than I believe we call it base melee range which I guess we're going to have to change because this is actually if they should start running towards us. But we'll leave it at base melee range for now. Anyway, if it's greater than the base melee range, we want it to run towards us. So we'll just move that code in there. And everything looks okay. So let's go into Unity. And let's try it out. So he's running towards us. Um, let's see, do we have any others up here that are runners? We do not. So I'm going to start him out uh, further away. He's still running even though he's like right on top of us. So let's put a debug log in there to see exactly how far away he is. So debug.log. And we just want to output dist. And I'm going to turn off my mob generator because I do have other mobs with this script attached to it. And I don't want to be getting the debug statements from that. I just want the one mob that I've placed in my scene to test with. So there we go. He's 
less than the distance, but he's still chasing us. And he should not be. So let's go take a look at the code and see why. Head back into Mono Develop. So we're saying if the distance is greater than the base melee range, then check to see if we're moving forward or not moving at all. So that's the problem is it sends the forward through. So an easy fix would be just to take this, cut it out, and we'll put a double ampersand in there, paste it in there, get rid of those if blocks that we have out there. And I'm just going to shift tab that back in. So now he'll only move forward if uh, we're supposed to move forward and his uh, range is less than, or sorry, his range is greater than the base melee range. Now at 1.4, he was pretty much standing on me. So I'm actually going to increase it to four. Now I'm also going to have to change this value in Unity because anytime you have a value in the inspector, if you change it in your script, the inspector value always overrides it. So keep that in mind when you're using public variables. So I'm going to have to select my Dungeon Guardian. And I believe I set it to 4. I'm going to try 4. Because I want him out a little bit further than just standing right on top of me. And there we go. So he stops right out there. So it looks like maybe 3. 3.5 would probably be the best. Uh, let's just try it. 3. Uh, we'll take a look. That's pretty good. So that's 2.9. So yeah, I'd say about 3, 3.5 possibly. At least this is, of course, according to the scale that I'm using for my model. So this is going to be changing for your game. But yeah, I'd say about 3.5 is good for me. So that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to quickly modify my values here, turn my mob generator back on adjust the value up here to 3.5 float and that's pretty much it for this tutorial so in the next one I'm gonna take um, bluezilla I'll reactivate him and I'm going to go ahead and attach scripts well he's already got the scripts I'm, I'm gonna make him actually work show you how to create those animations if it doesn't already have it I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.